Um, welcome everybody to today's uh, open discussion session of the workbook Lessons in A Course in Miracles. Today, we will pick up where we left off last time, which is lesson 59, number three. We usually start our sessions with quieting and centering our minds, followed by a prayer. Settle comfortably in your chair and close your eyes if you feel comfortable doing so. Gently breathe in and out at your own pace. Let any thought that may visit you now pass by. Do not cling to it. Instead, focus on the clear, empty, receptive space that is your mind, that is our mind. This is where we are connected with our source and with each other. This is where the Holy Spirit speaks to us. Rest in that peaceful place a while. Let us pray together. The following prayer is from Workbook Lesson 315, slightly adjusted. Each day, a thousand treasures with every passing moment come to us. We are blessed with gifts throughout the day in value far beyond all things of which we can conceive. A brother smiles upon another. And my heart is, our heart is gladdened. Someone speaks a word of gratitude or mercy, and our mind receives this gift and takes it as its own. And everyone who finds the way to God becomes my, our Savior, pointing out the way to us and giving us his certainty that what he learned is surely ours as well. We thank you, Father for the many gifts that come to us today and every day from every son of God. Our brothers are unlimited in all their gifts to us. Now may we offer them our thankfulness that gratitude to them may lead us on to our creator and his memory. Now, gently come back to our shared space here on the internet and smile to your fellow travelers on the journey without distance to a goal that has never changed. All right. Hi, Sharon. Hi. Welcome. I'm Good on to my see you. Yeah, I'm coming to you on my phone. I cannot get in on my computer. I'm sorry to hear that, but it's good to see you. <laughs> good to be here. Very good to be here. All right. I'm glad. I'm glad to see you. Okay. Let's start. Um, I'll share screen and we'll look at lesson 59. And we'll take it from there. Can you see? Hold on. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm keep, there we go. Okay. Can you see the lesson 59? All right. Yes. Yes. All right. Yeah. I'll read the five lessons just to bring back to memory where, where, we, were, where we are at. Lesson 59. One, God goes with me wherever I go. Two, God is my strength. Vision is his gift. Three, God is my source. I cannot see apart from him. Four, God is the light in which I see. Five, God is the mind with which I think. Would anyone like to speak about the five together before we zoom in on number three? Okay. 
share screen again. I keep getting the, the chat window, which is really, there we go, three. Um, I'm just going to ask somebody to, to read number three. Uh, would you read Andrew? Please. Of course. God is my source. I cannot see apart from him. I can see what God wants me to see. I cannot see anything else. Beyond his will lie only illusions. It is these I choose when I think I can see apart from him. It is these I choose when I try to see through the body's eyes. Yet the vision of Christ has been given me to replace them. It is through this vision that I choose to see. I, I would really like to see through Christ's vision. Uh, it's, it's very clear, I think, we're, we're looking at illusions all the time. But I, I just find it easier to think of this whole universe as a dream rather than illusion. It's the same thing, but it's a bit easier to understand as a dream because we have dreams when we're asleep and we can wake up from them and they disappear. It could be like a most troubling dream and you wake up from it. And it's nothing anymore, you know. That's right. So that, that's a helpful metaphor. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, any, anything else which, that you'd like to share about that um, review lesson, Andrew? Well, God is my source. I cannot see apart from him. That one sentence is is very easy to understand because uh, God is our source. We're extensions of God. There's no life without God. So in order to have to see, you have to have life. So that that's pretty pretty basic to understand. But it, the trickier part is we think we see with our body's eyes and we see a world that's not there. That's all I have to offer right. right now. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Anybody else would like to chime in? About the body's eyes. And so, and I, Derek, go ahead. Yeah, uh, we, we had talked about this a little while ago somewhere um, where I was saying that, you know, sometimes I'm filled with feelings of love when I look at somebody or a stranger and I just feel this joining, just, just love. And, but I'm definitely looking through the body's eyes. I'm not seeing little rims of light around anybody. I mean, I'm looking through the body's eyes at another, you know, individual human being and I'm even thinking of them as, oh, here's a stranger on the street. But I'm feeling that that loving joining connection. And at some point we had been discussing how, you know, sort of seeing through the Holy Spirit's vision. Uh, maybe it would maybe not be a literal thing we're talking about, but this feeling these feelings while we're looking at somebody but when i read this um that line it is these i choose to see when i try to see through the body's eyes that i i seems pretty literal to me so i'm like it really seems to be referring to if i've got my eyes closed just like i i, I don't know I don't know. I'm confused by this. I don't know what they're talking about. I guess that's who I want to share. <laughs> Thank you, Derek. You're not alone. <laughs> You're definitely not alone. Would anybody like to share what they think perhaps is the difference or, or how to toggle between the two? Or Because I think you were onto something, Derek, at, at the beginning of what you were saying, that you sometimes get the feeling of connection and of love. 
And uh, that's independent of what your eyeballs are registering or what your brain is registering from the input your eyeballs give it. That, that's helpful. I, did, I never thought about that. I so thought you if said, I would, you said it. <laughs> well, I, I was thinking if I see somebody, if my eyes are open and I see somebody, then that clearly I'm not doing it, you know. But what you just said is, even if I am looking through the body eyeballs, it's sort of irrelevant if I'm feeling that joining connection. Yeah. Uh, but, I no, know. I think so. No, I, I agree. Well, you know, we, we're figuring this out as we go together. That's the whole point of, of being together like this. Um, and sometimes Ardith is with us and she doesn't have the, the, the images. And so she does it without her eyeballs and she does perfectly all right. So well, that's, a good, that's a good point. Yeah. So she, she uses her ears, of course. So that's another physical sense. But, just, you know, um, Andrew, would you, what would you like to add? I just want to say that uh, feelings like that, uh, I believe, are uh, the way the Holy Spirit communicates sometimes. Uh, you know, I've, I've never heard words in my head that sounded like they were a message from God, but I have definitely had feelings of just Im immense love. I just, I would just feel so much love coming at me and i think that's a way god communicates through the holy spirit not so much in words some people do hear words but i've never heard any thank you yeah thank you for adding that yeah it's sort of like you feel like a whole a booster shot of love go, going through right coming through <laughs> yeah yes yes yeah and it's, you know, the Course does say that we are an idea in the, in the mind of God. God is an idea. And, and it's very abstract. And, of course, the body's eyes and what it registers in the brain is all very concrete. And so it's, it's totally opposite to what we're used to. Um, yeah. It's, it's perhaps okay to leave it a, a bit mysterious still. So we'll come, we'll come back to it in another round. Um, shall we move on to lesson uh, four? I'll share a screen. You're muted, muted Hannah. You've been muted Sorry, for a bit. I, yeah, I, I've been muted. I asked Keith to read. Would you please read, Keith? Sure will. Thank you. God is the light in which I see. I cannot see in darkness. God is the only light. Therefore, I am to see. If I am to see, it must be through him. I have tried to define what seeing is, and I have the wrong. Now it has given me to understand that God is the light in which I see. Let me welcome vision and the happy world it will show me. Any thoughts, Keith? Not other than sounds pretty good to me. What I find confusing is that it, it, it does use the, the parameters of of eyeball seeing like darkness and light but it is meant in an abstract way so that makes it extra difficult i think uh derek go ahead yeah i found myself seeing in darkness pretty heavy yesterday i went by a grocery store and there were two people out front seeking donations for the uh society for the protection of animals and i just love animals and we've got two cats and a dog that we've rescued and you know whereas i i read the course and other spiritual literature and depending on what you listen to 
you know, all of our difficult situations may come from something we're thinking at a really deep level. It may come from something, tra childhood trauma. It might come from a past life, but it's always associated with we're at the source of some problem um, that we have. But I didn't listen to the webinar that happened the other week about pets and animals, but I've always had a question in my mind of if they can't consciously think and choose the way we do, then how are these, you know, is that poor doggy that's suffering because he's a stray out there and just malnourished? Like, was he a jerk of a baboon in a, in a previous life? Or like, so I still don't have any sort of like explanation that I've heard that explains why animals seem victimized. So anyway, when when they were collecting donations, I started thinking about all of the uh, animals out there that are sick or suffering or domestic ones that don't have homes or even ones in the wild, like Andrew's been talking about that are you know getting chewed up, um, they're suffering, all that sort of stuff. And it really pulled me down and I got really, felt really bad and really heavy and like, I should be donating more. I should do more. This is such a terrible thing. And then I was like, oh, hold on, Derek, L let go of seeing everything is victimized. That's not helping me. It's not helping anything. But the, the contradiction that I'm trying to resolve is once I sort of let go of that weighty, that heaviness, that sadness, then I'm like, oh, well, I've got rescued two cats and a dog. I'm good. I don't need to help them help any others, even though I know there's millions of others of animals suffering out there. So I feel like I use this spiritual bypass of talking to the Holy Spirit to absolve myself from doing anything more. And then I'm like, well, that doesn't solve anything. I mean, even though there's nothing to solve. So anyway, I, that just seeing in the darkness really messed me up yesterday and I'm still trying to come to terms with it. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for sharing that heartfelt. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Andrew. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I was going to respond to the last sentence uh, about the happy world that uh, vision will show me. But I, I just want to address Derek's comment a little bit. You know, th this world it is a world of suffering and, and fear. It, that's, that's just the way it is. The happy world, I try to imagine the happy world. I haven't seen it, but I can imagine it's a place where there's no fear of death because we, there is no death. Uh, there's no loss. Just, uh, increase whatever whatever is given to one is, is shared to, with everyone it, it's it's hard to imagine a happy world like that but I, that's all i can think of it's a place where there's no loss no fear only love the, and this illusionary world is just the opposite that, that's my only comment thank you Derek, would you like to respond to that? Yeah, I would. The, um, the uh, admittedly ego argumentative voice in my head, and I can, I can tell this is, I, I'm having a bad day, I'm in a bad mood, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm feeling very uh, edgy and very ego heavy right now. But uh, I, I like what Andrew said, but what always screams in my head when I even hear about this, you know, if we let go of fear and let go of the fear of death and and we have these Christ vision consciousnesses, all of us human beings, I'm like, well, what the hell does that do for the scared, hurt animal? Where's their, you know, Christ, my ability to tune into Christ mind and not feel their fear, not feel their pain like so I, I, I feel like the whole freaking world other than human beings is being left out of this, but I don't know. I'll leave it at that. Sorry, guys. It's okay. Don't say sorry. Um, yeah. Peter, would you like to address that? Or would you, would you like to address lesson four, the fourth uh, review? 
No, I was going to address the uh, the topic that Derek brought up. Okay, go ahead. So, Derek, do you want the good news or the bad news? Oh, just give me the bad news, man. It's actually both. It's the same. It's both the same. The, the good news actually is that everything that we think we see out there is is in our own mind. It's not really happening. There are no suffering animals. There are no suffering people. Remember, the only purpose of this world is to make guilt real. And the, and the currency that the ego deals in is guilt. And guilt, and the way we know there's guilt is because we're upset. So, so this, is, this is playing into the ego's plan. There is no world. There are no animals that are suffering. There is only God and God's love, God's vision, God's knowledge. And everybody's safe, everybody is uh, whole and complete. There's no pain, there's no suffering. So this horror show that we think we see is an outward picture of an inner condition. And so that's why the Course says my only function, forgiveness is my only function as the light of the world. So to forgive all of that is the way to heal it. And then we heal ourselves in the process. The, so, so the best that instead of donating, I mean, you can donate if you want, but mm -hmm. the best, I think, uh, let me speak for myself. So I'm having my own challenges today and this week. And so, you know, the question for me is, okay, something's upsetting me. Something's not going the way I think it's supposed to. I want to point the finger at somebody and say, it's your fault that I feel the way I do. And there's this little voice in the back of my head that's going, forgive this is your function as the light of the world. And it's like, I don't want to forgive. I want to be right about them being wrong. Look at what they did to me. Look at how upset I am. And it must be their fault because I wasn't upset before they did what they did. So there's proof. And that little voice is going, forgiveness is your function as the light of the world. Forgiveness and happiness are one you know, all the workbook lessons. And so we have a choice, you know, and the choice is because the worst thing we could, this, this, that's why I say forgiveness is not really the right word, it, but it's the only word we have in the English language, I think. It's more like not make it realness. Don't react to it as if it's real because then we empower it. We give it power, we give it life. Whereas if we, remember, forgiveness is still and quietly does nothing. Don't make it real. And then ask the Holy Spirit, okay, Holy Spirit, what would you have me do? Where would you have me go? What would you have me say and to whom? And then you may be led to make a donation or you may be led to, to rescue something, but it'll be coming from a different place. It's not going to be making the guilt real. It's not going to be making the world real because we know better. The whole point of this now, it's, it's a reversal. It's mind training. And the mind training is, don't be fooled. That's not really what's happening. It goes back to the original point Andrew was making about the difference between you know, reality and a dream. When we wake up, the Course tells us, when we wake up, all of this is going to disappear. Gary Renard's book, Disappearance of the Universe, because when you wake up, it's all gone, and it never happened. We won't even remember this. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Peter. Something to think about. Derek? Yeah, I, I just wanted to say that I guess I lack a faith. Uh, I'm just noticing this right now, that I guess I lack a, a faith in the Holy Spirit in the sense of, you know, if, if an animal's suffering and I can do something to make it feel loved or make it feel safe or give it some food, um, if I, instead of taking that loving action, if I go, this is not real, this is not happening, that kitty cat is not real, I'm not real, I'm forgiving, I'm forgiving, and the fucking cat is sitting there going, dude, if you could just pick me up and give me some food. So I, so I flip it and I go, if I'm suffering and Peter walks by and instead of giving me that food or that water or, or helping me because I, I cut myself and I need to be taken to the hospital, instead of helping me, if he goes into a meditation and, and forgives and realizes I'm not real, I want to strangle the guy. It's like, Jesus Christ, where's you, Hermione? Fucking help me, you know? I think the place where the 
my faith is lacking is what Peter just said. If I forgive, then the Holy Spirit will act through me, and it's quite likely going to be the most effective loving action. It might be a hug. It might be some food. Um, so I'm, I'm realizing that I'm resistant to let go of me judging things as bad because I know that I will help if I see something bad. And if I can, I am going to help. And, and if I let go of that, I'm like, well, shit, what if the Holy Spirit just has me sit there and smile at somebody that needs food? That's terrible. So I, I'm just noticing this in this conversation, this lack of, of, of trust in God's love moving through me to actually act in the world lovingly. So thanks, thank Peter. You, yeah, thank you, Derek. You, you're you're um, expressing yourself very clearly. Uh, Peter, go ahead. So, so um, again, I'm just going to speak for myself. So my understanding, and it could be flawed, but my understanding is the best thing that I can do is, see, if I feed that hungry person at one level, I'm affirming their suffering. I'm, a, I'm affirming their lack of perfection. I'm affirming, remember, we don't see the sin and make it real. We understand there is no sin. There is no illness. The Course says, see, I'm not really serving that other person. There, there's not actually another person, but I'm not serving myself by making that suffering real because it just keeps the dream going. And the Course does say, I think it's lesson 134, 135, 136. It's specifically talking about sickness. And of course, in the teacher's manual, it says that we don't give any reality to the different apparent forms of sickness. We only hold the true vision of our brother, which is perfect, whole, and complete. And in those lessons, somewhere in 130, I think it's 134, he says that when we do this forgiveness, things will change without us doing anything. And that hungry person will no longer be hungry or that sick person will no longer be sick because we're creating that sickness in our mind and then making it real by acting on it. Now, again, maybe the Holy Spirit will direct us specifically in one direction or another, but I think for me, and again, it might be my limited understanding, we don't want to make the illness real. We don't want to make the suffering real. We don't want to make this experience. There is no world. And that's the way everybody goes home. And all the sick, he says, I, I think it's, I got, I'm going to look, it's in one of those lessons that when we see one person that way and they are healed, everybody's healed. You could heal all the sick animals at one, in one moment by not making it real. Now, I get it, it's a fine line. I mean, what do we do with compassion? What do we do with understanding? You know, what do we do when we see what appears to be somebody in pain? But I'm wondering if we don't do them more of a disservice than a service, by making that situation real. And I don't know. Maybe you're right. I don't know. I guess the Holy Spirit's got the answer for us. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. A response, Derek? No, thank you. This is very, very, very helpful. I really appreciate it. Yeah. I find it very helpful, too. Thank you. Andrew? Yeah, just uh, to respond to Derek, I would say that... Uh, if you want to help, that's that's a form of love. You're you know you're acting out of love, and I think that can't can't do any harm as long as you have uh, do it for the right motive. Yeah, thank you. That's sort of like combining level one and level two, right? We're at level two, dealing with the world in all its uh, forms and shapes. And then getting a hold of love and let that inspire us. Um, That's right. We, we at a given to, moment. Sorry. We have to uh, exist in. We have to be in the world, but not of the world, like yeah. Jesus says in the yeah. Bible. True. And then still, the metaphysics of the course, as Peter outlined, are so helpful to keep in mind, and that the Holy Spirit. We know nothing. We don't know what anything is for. 
So when we see an animal and we think it's suffering, the only sane thought would be, I don't know what this is for. I don't know anything. And that, that's, of course, a statement that the world doesn't like to hear at all. <laughs> and so you better say it silently to yourself. <laughs> Oh, um, shall we go on to the to the next one? Um, then um, Peter, would you would you read number five? I keep getting the chat on the on the on the screen, and that's so I'm I don't know if you guys see it, but here's five. Go ahead. God is the mind with which I think. I have no thoughts I do not share with God. I have no thoughts apart from him because I have no mind apart from, from his. As part of his mind, my thoughts are his and his thoughts are mine. Now, right away, the tip off here is the capital T in the last sentence, thoughts, the last part of the last sentence. So the course differentiates between you know, our thoughts, what we think the course, I think the course says what we think are our thoughts are not our real thoughts. And so there's this, and also like uh, Johanna mentioned earlier, you know, of course says I'm a thought in the mind of God, it says my, God is an idea, God is a, uh, it's very confusing for the finite ego mind to understand what he's actually talking about here. Um, again, I think the best thing, and I don't always do this, in fact, I probably more often than not don't do it, but is to be aware of what I seem to be thinking and then ask the Holy Spirit, what, what does this mean? Because the Course says, I don't know what I am. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know, you know, I give, I give everything the meaning it has, but it's the ego that's giving it the meaning. And that's always going to be wrong. So this is really, remember, the, the, the Course says that we have an authority problem. You know, the ego wants to be in charge. The ego wants to be God and the ego wants to run the show. And so if my first impulse is to say, I don't know what anything means. I don't know what anything is for. Please guide me, please direct me. And in that moment, I'm actually undoing the ego or at least undoing the ego's inclination to, know, to, to think it knows and to think it has the power to decide what everything means and what the best we don't again of course says, i don't know my own best interests there's very few people in the world who are going to say yeah i don't know my own best interest jesus you show me you tell me you know the ego the ego will not stand for that the ego says of course i know it's my own best interest <laughs> i course, of course i know what this means and again it's that authority thing we want to be in charge we want to be god and 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 this idea of separation that flows from that. And that's, honestly, that's what we're up against. And, and that's why we need a book that's 1200 pages long to undo that. Because it, it, this, is a, this is a deeply ingrained, constantly reinforced way of thinking. So am I really willing to give up this autonomy that says I am separate, I am distinct. And by the way, I know what's best for me and I know what's best for you. And if you don't listen to me, I have the right to do whatever I want to do to you to get you in line with my thinking. And this is the way the world operates. So, so I really have to, this is the willingness. I really have to be willing to say, gee, I don't really. And he says, you know, eventually we can tolerate only so much pain, but eventually, or, and, and we also don't know how miserable we are. He has to tell us how miserable we are before we'll start listening, because most of us think this is a, this is actually pretty cool. Yeah, I have a bad day, and you know sometimes things don't go my way, but you know it's not so bad. And the course is saying, no, you guys are completely missing the boat. Life is not is nothing like this. Your true reality is nothing like this. There is no death. There is no pain. There is no loss. There is no separation. I can go on and on and on, but that's what yeah. I got on that. No, you're Thank on you. a roll. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, anybody else? Anything regarding number five? Andrew? Yeah, I just want to say that that sounds like a, a non-dual belief. I have no mind apart from God. His thoughts are mine. That, that, that's non-duality in a nutshell. That's all. Yeah, that's true. It's level one. But what helps me when I read about thoughts in the course, I, I think I mentioned it before some, in another week, is the ego has regurgitations. It just rehashes the past. There's never a creative thought. It's just, you know, like a, a replay. And the Holy Spirit has inspirations. So when I read a text like this, I go like, I have no inspirations that I do not share with God. So they come from God. I have no thoughts apart from him because I can only, my ego can only regurgitate, can only replay. So it's never inspiring. Um, my thoughts are his and his thoughts are mine. His inspirations are mine. And I, I like to think of it that way. That, that helps me when I, when I study the course. Go ahead, Derek. I just wanted to call out a fallacy in my thinking that just occurred to me. Um, it was percolating after Peter got done speaking. And uh, the fallacy in my thinking is that I, I see this you know, world. I believe it's real. I see all the suffering animals since that's the, the thing I'm on at the moment. And I conclude, well, God, you're not freaking fixing this. You know, look at all the problems everywhere. I'm letting you fix it and you ain't fixing it. So Jesus, I guess I got to do something. I got to view this as wrong and I need to go about, you know, like Peter said, the ego, you know, has to believe it knows what is in its best interest and in the the, the suffering animal's best interests. Um, but there's a fallacy there, which is God isn't creating this world and, and somehow this ego mind, all different parts of it, are lacking forgiveness and that's feeding into all these manifestations of what appear to be pain and suffering and and all these problems and and all of these uh individual minds like your mind and my mind and perhaps in some way even the trees and the animals i don't really know but it's like w the whole mind has to learn to forgive so when i say there god go ahead and, and fix it oh you're not fixing it I'm not acknowledging that God can't do anything when all of these different facets of the ego mind are all continuously creating this negativity. And we all need to learn how to forgive for it to dissolve. So I just got that um, as I was percolating on what he said. Thank you for adding that. Very clear. Peter. Yeah, thanks, Derek. You want the good news or the bad news? So this is what, uh, I, I'm just kidding. This is what occurs to me. So there's a line in the course that says, this world was over long ago. We're reliving, we're replaying over and over and over something that never even happened. That's how out of touch we are. He says at the end, time rolls up like a blanket and it's like, it's disappeared. There is no, there, you know, so, so we are completely out of touch. This world was over long ago. Are you kidding? So, so you know, and, and I'm reliving it over and over again in my mind. And that's why I'm having this experience. So I guess what I just want to say is it just strikes me that we can't trust anything that we think is real. We can't trust anything we think we see, hear, taste, tell, smell, or touch. Remember, projection makes perception. So whatever I think I see, whatever I think I smell, taste, or touch, it's coming from my own mind. There is nothing out there. There is no world. And yet, how do I take that and, and be in the world, but not of it and practice forgiveness? And that's why for me, the, the, the practice of forgiveness is, I can see now why it's so emphasized, why it's so reinforced and it's so difficult because it goes against everything that the world, forget about just not being judgmental you know, or not judging my, my brother or anything like that. It's like just looking at this, forgiving myself for thinking I see a chair. 
or thinking I see a couch, you know, it's forgiving all of that at that level. That's hard stuff for, for us. So then it comes, you know, forgiving myself, compassion, understanding, love for myself for being so crazy. I mean, the course says we're insane. And I used to have a teacher, a guy who taught the course, he actually passed recently or seemingly passed recently. And he always used to say, remember, it's not a human ego. The ego that the course is talking about is a divine ego. Not that it's divine, but it's on the level of that, you know, it's not a human mind we're talking about. It's, it's this divine mind that thinks it's having this experience and creating this world and all of that. So, all right, I'm done. Thanks. Uh, thank you for the good. That's helpful. Thanks. <laughs> All right. I, I see two hands up, uh, Mahit, and then Kiki. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm. Might not be the right word, but I'm enjoying this discussion. <laughs> Yet, um, something that I wanted to share was uh, something that I've really noticed is like that secret dream lately, where you know I project. I notice the projection. Um, and then I, uh, I realized that I'm only projecting because I'm actually really believing that, um, how guilty I feel for, um, thinking what I did, you know, the separation that I chose that separation and getting in touch with that is, is like, um, uh, I don't know how to say it. Like if I get to that part, for me, it always becomes a little easier to forgive because then I'm really close to what it's really about. And I know it, lately it feels a lot like, I think what Peter just said, like being uh, in touch with the forgiveness about myself. And I don't just mean like only the myself, me, but I mean like the whole situation, like you can forgive the whole situation by realizing um, that I'm projecting this situation, you know, let's take your situation with the animals. I'm projecting this situation because I really truly don't want to get in touch with the, with the guilt that's in my mind. So just lately, I've just been bringing it back to it's guilt, 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 and not even going into many of those thoughts anymore of like uh it's about this or it's about that it's just guilt you're it's generalizing just, it yes generalizing, generalizing it, it yeah yeah and then it becomes a little easier uh to uh to realize yeah what the problem is all the time <laughs> thank you yeah thank you for adding that Margit. derek would you like to respond no, a thumbs up. Good. Uh, Keith, go ahead. Um, so, you know, we've learned through the course that if you get upset, um, that's a trigger to uh, ask the Holy Spirit for help. Um, so, in, in that sense, um, on the subject of triggers, it seems to me that um, whenever we're in this, well, we've been talking a lot about. Um, um, help the help the animal or don't help the animal. Donate to the charity or don't do the take charity. Seems to me like whenever we're in that dichotomy of yes, do this or don't do this, that could be a trigger of ask for help. Yeah, thank you for adding that, Keith. Um, I suppose you know, as soon as you notice that the thought does that you're thinking doesn't make you happy, you can just bet that it's a regurgitation of the ego. It's a replay of, of, of old news. And so you don't want that. <laughs> so even if, if it's convincing and if the evidence is out there, still, if it doesn't make you happy, if the thought doesn't make you happy, that's the first sign to say, okay, I'm not having that. And so what are you having? Asking for, the, asking for guidance, yeah. And that's that's like Peter said, so contrary to what the world is about, that it's very difficult to do. But that's that's the challenge, really, as far 
as far as I understand it. Would anyone uh, like to share on, on number five, God is the mind with which I think? Okay, so we'll move on. We still have time. Um, so we come to lesson, next section, le lesson 60. Um, can you guys see what I'm sharing? Because I'm getting a notice that my screen sharing is paused, but if you can see it, I I'll just continue. Uh, 60. Um, that's five lessons. I'll read the titles first. One, God is the love in which I forgive. God is the strength in which I trust. Three, there's nothing to fear. Four, God's voice speaks to me all through the day. Five, I am sustained by the love of God. Like the previous five, these are all centered around around God or based on God. Mm, I see that Keith has raised his hand. Go ahead, Keith. Yeah, it was about the sharing on the screen. We we, we could see the screen, but we couldn't see uh, lesson 60 or, or whatever you were reading. Oh, we I don't know. The old, the old stuff we'd already read. Okay. All right. Thank you for that feedback. Well, I hope I read it clear enough so everybody <laughs> could follow. <laughs> Um, is, does any, do any of you want to share about the, the five together as, as, as a group? The five lessons? No? Okay. I'll try again. What is so funny, every time I do scare, scare, share screen, I get the chat box and I have to take that out before I can, I can actually see. And so here. Can you see 60 now? Yes. Okay. Uh, Sharon, would you read number one, please? Yes, I would love to. Thank you. God is the love in which I forgive. God does not forgive because he is never condemned. The blameless, blameless cannot blame, and those who have accepted their innocence see nothing to forgive. Yet forgiveness is the means by which I will recognize my innocence. It is the reflection of God's love on earth. It will bring me near enough to heaven that the love of God can reach down to me and raise me up to him. Thank what you, Sharon. Thought. Any, any thoughts, Sharon? Uh, I just think that's beautiful. And I, I love the fact that there, this really tells us there, there isn't a need to forgive at all because nothing ever happened, anything, nothing at all ever happened on any level um, because we're all, we've always been with God, even though it looks like we haven't and we're all safe. Including the animals. Yeah, it, absolutely. <laughs> I, I remember as a, a young, um, a young mother, some, somewhere something came into my mind, a thought that, and I can remember even saying it to my children, and I didn't know where it came from, but I, I said, uh, everything is as it should be at all times, no matter what it looks like on the outside. And I don't know where that came from. It certainly was not part of the religion I was brought up in. But I just knew that no matter what's going on and how it looks, there's something good in it. There's there's a reason for it somehow, and it's okay. Yeah, thank you for sharing. That fits that lesson well. Anybody else? Oh, I see two hands. Um, Andrew and then Keith. I just gave Sharon a thumbs up, that's all. Oh, that's all. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, Keith, go ahead. Oh, you're muted, Keith. Does anyone recall if um, the course or any other course teacher has addressed animals directly? The, the webinar? 
that was on not so long ago. It was um, Holy Relationships with Animals. And there were several people on there, course students and teachers, who are also very much involved with their pets and horses and etc. You can find it on the uh, asim.org and then go to uh, webinars. It's it was recently uh, um, it was recent um, last week I think. All right, thank you. Yeah, I don't know if they address suffering per se, but they did they do make the connection between course teachings and the way we we deal with animals. Yes, that was last Thursday. Last Thursday. Yeah, it was so wonderful. I, yeah, I saw. Great. Did you see the whole thing? I saw part of it. Uh, no, well, I I couldn't see it. I got sent the link, and I only could see the very beginning, and then it oh. went black. But I I listened to it, and it it was great. It was okay. great. As, yeah. All right. Um. Anybody else about um, God is the love in which I forgive. Johanna, I just want to just in general, I think on what uh, was just said, especially with what Sharon said, in lesson 135, he says, what could you not accept if you exactly. but knew that everything that happens, all, of, all events past, present, and to come are gently planned by one whose only purpose is your good. Perhaps you misunderstood his plan, for he would never offer pain to you. But your defenses did not let you see his loving his see his loving blessing shine in every step you ever took. So again, I mean, as you know, it, it's um, as long as I think I have to do something, as long as I think there's a problem out there, as long as I think there's there's pain and suffering in the world, it's going to be very hard to apply the principles of the course. Now, I don't want to come off as not being loving, as not being compassionate. He does say that, the, that even in this world, we make very real relationships and, and that the Holy Spirit will let go of everything except the love that's real in those relationships. So it's, it's, it really becomes a, a um, I don't, this is what I think Derek was alluding to earlier, uh, and I'm not quite sure how to navigate this, but how do I love and forgive and, and, and be in the world Remember, he also says, you know, the denial of the body is a particularly unworthy form of denial. And I always extend that to say denial of the world is a particularly unfor unworthy form of denial because we think, we're, he says, you think you're here. So you have to deal with it as if you think you're here. So, so the challenge slash opportunity is to rise above that thinking, to know the truth, and then to act in accordance with the guidance that we receive. You know, and most days I still don't want to ask for guidance. I just want to be right about them being wrong. I'm, I'm visiting family. I'm in Florida again, visiting family. And it's, you know, what time is it? It's, uh, you know, by 11 a.m. I got a whole list of grievances. And the grievances are, you know, I'm right and they're wrong. <laughs> this is my, this is the way I've been staying the course for 30 years. And I still have a list of grievances before 11 a.m. with the people that I love. <laughs> so, um, so that's what I'm up against. I don't know about the rest of you guys, but that's that's what's going on in my mind. So I'm I'm speaking as close to the course as I can, and um, it's not always easy. Yeah. And that's another that's another reason to forgive myself, you know, yeah. to to cut myself some slack. Yeah. All right. Now I'm I, really done. I, Thank you. Yeah, I think you speak for all of us, uh, Peter. But can you repeat, please, where you read that from, for the people who are listening on later at a later time? Uh, it's lesson uh, 130, 135. 135. Yeah. Thank you. All I, right, if I defend two. myself, if I the lesson is if I defend myself, I am attacked. Okay. Thank you. There's two hands up. Um, Sharon and then there, Derek. Go ahead. Okay. Now, I just want to say that um, uh, when I was on vacation, I really wanted really wanted to come home after two weeks. Two weeks is a long vacation for me. And in the third week, I found out that I was not going to be able to get to come home when I thought I was. We were going to have to extend our trip by another four days 
uh, because, you know, my dental stuff wasn't going to be done in time. And boy, everything just started coming up into me like, oh, no, like that is the worst news. And right behind that feeling was uh, those words. If uh, what could you not accept? And I, I didn't know where that was going, but it was so wonderful to be able to go to the online edition and put that in the search bar and have that come up. What could you not accept if you knew that every event was planned? You know, it was just, oh my gosh, that's so wonderful. And it allowed everything to fall away and for me to love those extra days. It was amazing. And that's what I love about the course and how immediate, if if I can just remember to listen and it will, it will tell me, it will give me all the little clues that will make me feel better, that will lead me to the happy place. And I'm so grateful, I'm just really grateful. Wonderful share, Sharon, thank you. Derek, your hand was up, but it's down again. Yeah, I guess I'll just summarize my thought. It's it's maybe more of a discussion for later, since we only got three minutes here. I was just going to comment on <clears throat> my pet, something I sort of think, I don't know if it's accurate or not, but I feel like Jesus uh, puts things in the course stated in a very uh, hopeful way that he doesn't shoot, he doesn't state things what I would call straight, because to say things the way they are would be fear inducing. And so this plan be the everything being gently guided by spirit, God's plan for salvation. I really question that word gentle. And when he says that we wander off the path, quote unquote, for a little while, I'm like, yeah, that's probably 5,000 years or 50,000 years or something. <laughs> But it doesn't do any good for him to, to say the facts that just make people fearful. So he put in very gen, general terms. I don't know if that's true or not, but I just want to call that out because this stuff hasn't been gentle by any stretch in my experience. <laughs> thank, thank you, you. Derek. <laughs> thank you, Derek. Well, on that note, I would, I would like to thank you all for being here and for your participation. And I'll, I'll read a short pair and then um, the session will be over. Um, here we go. Please close your eyes if you feel comfortable doing so. This prayer is taken from lesson 229 and it's slightly adjusted. Love which created us is what we are. Now need we seek no more Love has prevailed, so still it waited for our coming home, that we will turn away no longer from the holy face of Christ. And what we look upon attests the truth of the identity we sought to lose, but which our Father has kept safe for us. Father, our thanks to you for what we are for keeping our identity untouched and sinless in the midst of all the thoughts of sin and foolish mind made up. And thanks to you for having us, for saving us from them. Amen. Thank you.